Hey guys, what's up? So we're back. We're back in the shop today. So what we're doing is we're gonna be doing some some dashes today. I'm gonna do a I don't know. I guess I'll do like a, a two or three series dash. I got three dashes. I got three different ideas, and I want to do three different three different videos on it. So you guys, hopefully you'll enjoy it. So it's something. Hopefully you can get some some knowledge out of. Three different ways you can do it. I'm gonna do a undercoat on one. We're gonna do a, a vinyl coat on one, and then I'll go to like the local parts store or something. Maybe get some some duper color paint, some some you know black single stage or or maybe a base clear. See how good that stuff does. I know it's really inexpensive for a quart, so uh, I, I I like it whenever I watch videos and guys are doing stuff in their shop. And they're just kind of making what they have work. That's what I mean. I don't have, I don't have a shear, and I don't have a pan break, and I don't have all that good stuff. I've worked in shops before that had all that, full blown sheet metal shops, fabrication shops. But I'm just your average dude. You know what I mean? Like we, I, I know there's plenty of us across the country that can can bounce ideas off of each other, and some good, some bad, some of mine are bad, some of mine are good. I guess I don't know. But anyway. Let's get started on it. I'm going to turn the camera around. I'll show you the dashes to kind of show you where the truck's at, what's going on, and then uh, we'll get started on this. I'll explain to you later on what I'm going to what I'm gonna be using on the, on the dashes. All right, guys, so here's the dashes. They're uh, both of them in real rough shape, like they've seen better days for sure. Most of them out there have anyway. So I, I, one is going to get a vinyl cover i've got some for some vinyl and actually i went to went to hobby lobby man they had a pretty good selection of vinyl and i bought um three yards of black vinyl and i've used some of that vinyl on my son's door panels and then i believe this one will be covered in undercoating and what i'm gonna do to get these holes filled in is i've got some i may find some expanded metal i have some but it, it's it's pretty it's a little bit overkill. I'll show it to you here in just a second. But I think what I can do is I can come in and I can get down to, see this is metal right here. And I could actually tack weld a piece of expanded metal and get rid of this, just do away with this grating or leave it. Cause I mean, I've just tried to break it and move it out of the way and it's still, still holding up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna just take and, uh, I'm just gonna take and, and bondo these. I've seen people use fiberglass. I've used, seen them use spraying foam. And to be honest, I'm using Bondo because I actually I already have it. I already have the Bondo. Let me make sure. Yeah, my cabinet needs to be cleaned up. Oh, Ethan, where's my Bondo at? I got primer. So anyway, somewhere I've got Bondo. My shop's not that big. So, oh, here it is right here. There's my Bondo right there with the hardener and the spreads, spreaders and all that. So, and I, may, I may actually have some fiberglass too. Yeah, I've got fiberglass. I don't know if i got the resin and hardener, but I'm sure I do. i got something there. Anyway. So, yeah, I got, I got a little shop, guys. I got a shop that's you know, it's out there with concrete and the truck sits out there in that part. And then I've got all my tools and all my stuff here. Kind of like a, kind of like a uh, tool room. Got welders and stuff. And, but I mean, nothing special, nothing, nothing, nothing over the top or expensive in here, I promise. But uh, anyway, the, the vinyl worked out pretty good on the, these are his door panels we did. And this is our very first video we uploaded was doing these door panels. And uh, this is, this is just vinyl. And what I did is I went to Amazon and I ordered this contact adhesive, and it's actually pretty good stuff. It uh, it it only it only sticks to itself. So I sprayed it on both pieces, and then once it dried, I put it together, and then I hit, hit it with a heat gun, and it it bonded. So real good stuff. Kind of expensive, but I got a gallon of it. How much how much you gonna use? You know, enough to uh, do all this stuff. So anyway, I'm rambling now. But anyway, this is uh, this is one dash. 
I got another dash there and I've actually got two more dashes outside but um, what we're gonna do is get started on this and uh, this week we're gonna put uh, new inner outer tie rods pitman arm uh, sway bar need some bushings all that good stuff we're gonna put his we're gonna put his we're gonna fix that headlight and we're gonna fix his uh put his dash in get his interior in and see what we can do about getting this thing on the road this week we're gonna take a quarantine cruise right get out and sneak out take it down the road and see what it'll do but anyway let me get the uh get the stuff started on these dashes i'll be back all right so here's what i have so far i've taken the ground the tracks out i ground some of that out and these went ahead and broke off so this is a little soft right here so i gotta figure out what i'm gonna do but i'm gonna just start filling the cracks and I saved this piece because I kind of want to, I need to know what to do as far as, you know, the, the transition and, and how thick it needs to be and where I'm at against the windshield and what I'm doing here. I think I was worried about this edge right here, but I'm going to go ahead and smooth it off and take it completely off. It's It kicks out. Let's see. Let's see the lip, how it turns up. And what I'm gonna do is just, just kind of transition and round that over a little better. Cause I still have my tabs where, it, you know, they slide down into the dash right underneath the windshield. And then they still mount. They still have the mounting tabs right here. So we'll, we, we should be okay as far as mounting. It's just, it's not gonna be an easy process. I can promise you that. It's gonna be a pain in the butt. I'll, uh, I'll get everything set up on my on my tripod here in a minute and and show you guys what I'm doing. But right now I'm just I'm just kind of playing around with it. This is the first one, so maybe in the next two videos I'll have more hands on how I how I set everything up and how I've got it. But I know this video is more I'm I'm learning as I go on this video. So anyway, I'll keep you guys posted. I'll be back. All right, so here's what I found in my shop. I found this roll of wire. I think it's just bathing wire. And I've put I've I've stuck it up into the the foam. And I mean I it, it's gave me quite a bit of strength. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep weaving it back and forth and then I'll start putting some filler in it. I got some dolphin glaze too, so I've got a few of them here. I just need to keep putting them in and they're just going right in this one i actually wrapped it around the middle of the dash let me see if i can get it turned down where you guys can tell better there you go just giving it some support some strength and like i said i'm gonna cross it but uh i'm gonna finish that up clean it up a little bit and get some filler on it mix it. i'm gonna i'm gonna do my filler 50 50 dolphin glaze and, and body filler and hardener. So anyway, this was the expanded metal I have and it's, I mean, it's like, a, I don't know what gauge it is, but it's pretty, it, it, I, it's for what I build, uh, it, it's for grades for like building smokers or whatever. So anyway, I built me a little smoker and that's what I use. That's what I have left over, but uh, Anyway, let me continue with this, get some filler in it, finish getting these wires wound through and get some, some more support in there and get some filler in it and see what we got. So we can get, see how much of this I can get done today. All right. Okay, so we're back. So here we go. We're almost ready for some filler. You can see we got this, this stuff here. I actually went to Home Depot and I got this, this mesh looking stuff from the drywall section. And then you can see we've got the wire still in it, the uh, the bathing wire. And then what I did for the backing on it is I put I put some gorilla some gorilla tape on it. It's sticking pretty good. Maybe keep the filler from coming all the way out and making a mess on the backside. 
So yeah, it's uh, it's prepped out. I think uh, I think it's close enough. These grades are pretty tough, so I'm just leaving them. Let the filler fill over the top of them, and then like I said, the th this is gonna float over, and you know what I mean, feather edge all that stuff out, fill these cracks in. But uh, I think what I'm gonna do is start putting some some filler on it get it filled and i was actually i'm not gonna lie i went when i went to home depot i got this stuff here this is the stuff i was telling you about this what's in the holes kind of a wire it's like a screen you know like a little plastic screen and, and it's got some adhesive to it too and then i thought about i thought about following suit with everybody else and doing the spray foam but We'll do that on the next dash because I don't want to wait 24 hours let that set up. I'm not sure if that's what the time is on the setup, but I know it takes longer than Bondo, so we're gonna move forward with the with the filler, get it sanded down, and maybe maybe tomorrow we'll get it all finished up, get it in the truck, see what it looks like. All right, guys. So we'll be back. All right, guys. So. Here we go. This is my second coat of Bondo on this. And you can tell I still have some low spots on it. I did sand some of it. And it came out. I've got some Bondo on that crack there. But I couldn't help myself. I went ahead and got the, the great stuff. Spraying foam is what I call it. Anyway, I got it out already. Let's just go ahead and fill these cracks in. I don't know that if it's even filling up down in past that screen or not. I'm trying to do it slow and push it down in there. That's why I didn't want to do this stuff because it makes such a mess. Let's just see how that works out. See how well that works out versus this. We'll do it all in one video. So, like I said, this is my first dash. I've got I've got a whole stack of trucks out there, and every one of the dashes needs some work in. So, I'm learning as you guys learn with me. All right, I'll be back. All right, guys, so here we go. Let's uh, see what this spraying foam stuff does. We, uh, we've we been doing other stuff. Anyway, let me adjust the camera up a little bit. There we go. So anyway, yeah, we've been working on other projects. This stuff is set up pretty good. I've just taken a little saw that I've got. Let's just... Uh, cut it and see what we have here so i may have to do this i'm shaking the camera so anyway let's just do it So it, it said that it could it'll cut within 16 minutes, but it takes eight hours to set up. So it's still a little sticky right here. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop on that. Let's see what we can do here. And the reason why I stopped on this one is I actually I actually knocked it off and it was still a little sticky so I put some more on top of it. But you know what? Let's just go ahead and do it. It is what it is.
once once this dries up and sets up, it's gonna do like this, and I can come in and and knock it down. It filled that crack up pretty good, but I I think I think if I was just gonna vinyl cover this, the foam would be okay. So I can tell you by the by experiment experimenting with it, playing around with the bondo and the foam. The bondo is going to have to go on the two dashes that we're going to actually do some, like the, uh, this one's going to get the undercoat, so this one will get bondo right here. This will be finished off in bondo, and uh, we'll do the rest of it in bondo. But uh, the one that we're going to vinyl cover, I'm just going to use this stuff, because um, that's all that's underneath this vinyl is this foam. So if this sets up hard enough, and I can get a, a pretty good cover on it. There's no need in, in using Bondo on it, I don't believe. We'll see. We'll we'll do something, but anyway. I think I'm gonna let this set up overnight and come out here tomorrow and hopefully finish this video up. So guys, uh I think I'm gonna call it a night and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, so it's the next day. All the all the Spray foam, that's all hardened up, it's set up, everything's good. I, well, I meant to clean this up. I've actually taken and already hand sanded this all nice and flat. You can see the, looks just white to you guys, but it's all nice and, nice and flat. I had a little bit of a weak spot right here that was wanting to cave in on me. So um, last night before I went in, I actually sprayed some spray foam here and in this area and it's all set up nice looks good i actually put some spray foam right here too and this is all set up and see that's that edge i was talking about that i wanted to keep and, and it's all in place now so the only thing i need to trim off is i don't know if you guys noticed but i actually spray foamed over some tape and i did that on i mean i i did it on purpose because it was there and i didn't really want to stop the video and trim it but i'll trim this back so that way whenever i go to do the edge it has something to bond to so like i said i've already been working on it this morning i've got everything i took a i took a block and just sanded everything whenever you're whenever you're sanding filler or doing body work like say if say if this is where you're at you don't want to just sand straight up and down you want to do it at 15 degree increments and then cross that pattern do it back and forth and then that way that allows you to have a nice flush even surface whenever you fit your hand across what you're working on this particularly isn't going to be just nice and flat because we're just going to put the undercoating on it and you know to be honest that undercoating hides quite a bit of stuff so and, and on top of that it's going to be in the dash so nobody's going to be walking up to your dash and eyeballing looking to see how straight your dash turned out so anyway the truck is black so when we get ready to paint it we're gonna have fun with that because he wants to go back black. We're gonna take you guys along for all of this build. Anyway, I'm ready to I'm ready to get it finished up so I can do the reveal. Show you guys what uh what you can do with little resources and a little bit of money and uh a whole lot of work and effort. I mean it's 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 taken quite a bit just to do the stash. It's, it's no easy task, but it's a task that can be done and uh, you can make it fun or you can make it a pain in the butt. Oh, another thing too is, man, if, if there's nothing wrong with this part of the dash, don't fill it. Don't put no filler on it. Just just put your filler on like you can see right here. I've got, I've got it pretty even. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna even up and fill this area with filler and then I'm gonna come out to where this paint stick is nice and even all the way across see how much filler i'm putting in i mean i'm hardly putting any in so that means around this area right here we'll get probably some filler but i'm i'm feather edging it all back in to where it's nice and smooth like see right here you can see that i've got filler all the way out to here but if i zoom in closer you can see the speaker grades now, if I were going to fiberglass and paint it like we're going to do the other dash, I'm not, I'm not so certain that 
I would let that go. But I'm I'm going to go ahead and put a, a nice little undercoating on it, and that builds up pretty good. Like you know, a good eighth inch mill thickness probably. I don't know, but I can I can look. I'm actually picking this up and moving it around, and that's not cracking. So there's no need and and see there's some grades right there and i'm all i gotta do is come in and fix this so there's no need in in actually building up and, and just killing your dash with with a bunch of filler you don't need if you don't need it like if this is fine like i can push on this everything's good i did see earlier this little stress crack right here and i mean just push over your surface and find all your weak spots and fix it like i'm gonna have to probably i'll probably put some uh spray foam in that just just because i like the way that stuff feels and i don't have filler in there and i'm just gonna fill over the top of it so anyway i'll, I'll get my tripod out and set it up i've got it right there but when i work when i do any work or sanding on my table it's just a wood table so whenever i'm hand sanding or whatever i'm doing it it shakes the camera so um like i said i'll figure this out as i go along but anyway that's just an update on it let me get uh let me get some filler mixed up all right guys so we're gonna mix up some more filler and i don't know why my hardener is clear i've never seen any clear or white hardener before but it is what it is right so, what I like to do is I only like to do one area at a time. Like if I, I could do all my filler here, all my filler here, all my filler here, and right here. I just do the whole, the whole thing. But if I do this one process on something that I'm new to, then whenever I get to this part or this part or any of the rest of the dash, I know what worked for me right here. So, just, just do one section at a time. Learn what you need to do on this section to help you get these other sections done. So, and I, I mixed up quite a bit of filler, so I may go ahead and fill this in too, but we'll see. You gotta make sure you mix your filler in good. Works all the air bubbles out of it. Works the hardener in it real good. I just like going across and then scooping it up and putting it on top of each other. So, anyway. And the hotter it gets outside, the less hardener you need. I put a crap load of hardener on it, so hopefully I can finish what I need to do. And if you just take and take your time, you know, play around with it. get it perfect the first time then go back and do it again I always like getting my bondo sprayed as smooth as I can get it it's less uh Less sanding if you do that. So yeah, I've got I've got quite a bit left over, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Fill this crack.
And whenever you clean up your, when you get done spreading your, your filler, if you'll just take and clean your, your spreader before it hardens up and sets up on you, it's a whole lot easier to take care of. It's a whole lot easier to do if you take and get some lacquer thinner and put on there and watch it just, it takes it right off. Cleans it up pretty good. So yeah, what I'm doing is I'm using, the tools for this job so far have been a DA sander, 80 grit sandpaper. This little uh, angle grinder here, little disc grinder, I don't know what it's, it's got a 36, cent, uh, 36 grit disc. I got a hand sanding block, I got a Bondo spreader, and then a roll of 80 grit sandpaper. And I really don't plan on doing anything but the 80 grit sandpaper because I'm gonna probably put, uh, probably put three good coats of uh, filler on this. So let's let this set up and then we'll be back and we'll hand sand and Get it ready for the next set. Okay, so we're back with an update. I went ahead and covered some more of the dash. I went ahead and sanded it. So when you're doing this, you need to know what tool to use and what not to use. So. I wish I had a better setup for you guys where I could actually set up like a, a time-lapse time lapse GoPro and uh, show everything I do in fast motion, I guess. That's, that's to come, though. I mean, for right now, we're, I'm just winging it on what, I'm, what kind of content I can put out. Also, I put last uh, the last clip I said that I was going to put three coats of filler. Actually, man, I'm going to put three coats of undercoat on it. Three good coats of undercoat. So... Uh, I haven't done this yet, so I'll, I'll set you guys up and show you what I do on this and what tools to use. Like I'll I'll take my DA and knock down all the high stuff, and then I'll come back and I'll I'll probably since this is such a wide surface and flat, I'll take my paint stick and and sand with it, or I may use my sanding block, or I might just use a piece of paper by hand. The thing about it too is if if you guys or, or hand sanding just make sure that you're sanding with your fingers closed to each other because if you're sanding like this you're only sanding where your fingers are touching see right there and there there and there but if you're hand sanding like like i said let's do this one time if you're sanding that part that's all you're sanding but if your hand is closed and you're using your palm and your fingers and you're sanding at the 15 degrees like i said you're getting everything just like wiping off the table or something but uh and then like i said i i hand sanded and got this little groove right here or, or not groove but this little edge in this corner that's all pretty good you gotta sh I, gotta I gotta shape it up just a little bit more but all the way down to the fine point where the feather edge feather edges out can't talk today and and you know what i mean it's the details that you pay attention to you know, if you're going to take this much time and effort to do something to this extent as a dash like this, you mean, take your time, pay attention to the details, do what you need to do, and and do it right. I mean, don't just tape up your windshield and your dash and spray paint cracks and everything. If that's what you're going to do, you might as well just leave it, just might as well leave it like it is and just throw some armor all on it and enjoy the way it is call it a patina dash i guess right so anyway uh with that being said let me set this up to where i can show you guys what i do right here and plus my tripod i mean it's not 
I try to get all of me in there, but really I'm just focused on uh, showing you guys what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and the techniques. This is probably going to be a two-part video. I'm going to show this piece getting how how I get this all leveled out and sanded. And then I'll probably just upload this video, this part of it, and then go ahead and finish the dash. Because I've already showed you guys enough of the how-to. Let's just get it. I'm to the point now where I'm ready to just get it done. Show you guys how I spray it. I will show you how I spray it and how I prep it and get it ready and all that on a on a part two. But uh, I'm ready just to get it done and, and get it get it coated and put it in the truck. So anyway, so one more one more little segment of this video and we're gonna I'm gonna upload it as a part one and then part two we'll come back and finish it up. Anyway, I'll be right back. Okay, guys. So we're gonna. We're gonna knock this down with the DA. It may be a little loud if you guys are listening with your earbuds or whatever, but uh, I'll unplug the compressor so it don't kick on. But let's get this knocked down and I'll get the hand sand and we'll, we'll float all this out and level it up and show you guys. <laughs> I got it moved down and it's hanging off so I can get you guys close to the camera, but sometimes your sandpaper will build up with with dust, so you might just have to slap it. <laughs> Get everything shaped up and, and knocked down before I start doing the hand sanding process because once I get the it, it shaped up and the, the get it knocked down to where I can get to where I can hand sand it once I get done hand sanding most of the time it's it's done I don't have to go back and redo anything unless I get a, a pinhole or some kind of a uh, you know low spot but this is it. This is that 36 grit, and you can see. I don't know if you can tell or not, but it's it's pretty worn down. But I'm just going to knock it down just to get in these valleys right here. And I, I, this is something I'm going to have to figure out here in a little bit too. <laughs>
So another trick you can do is take a paint stick and make it the width of your hand or the width of the surface that you're working with and then just wrap it in some sandpaper that whatever grit you're working with. I think this is the first time I've done any body work in my, inside my shop. Man, my welders, my toolboxes, my cabinet, everything's covered in sandpaper dust. So I'm pretty sure the next couple of dashes will be done outside. So anyway, that, that gives you the width of what you're doing, the width of what you're working with, and let you knock it down. notice I, I'm keeping my hand together and I'm going across ways and I'll go back this way here in a minute but most of my pressure is is right in here in this part of my hand right where the high spots at I mean I, it, it could be taken down quite a bit more and all I'm doing is just rolling over this edge to, to make this contour all the same so guys remember I this had a big crack in it and then when I took this and, and cleaned all that out and found some good solid foam in it it had a pretty pretty wide valley and a pretty good sized gap so I took the spray foam and spray foamed it and then come back this morning and cleaned it up and then we put some bondo over the top of it all right so here it is finished up you uh that's what I just showed you. I used uh, I used this grinder and I took the crack and I ground out the crack and I found a good solid surface. Good I, I found good material. I went back and I put the spray foam on it, let it set up overnight, let it set up and cure, had to wait eight hours, and then you see me a while ago when I had some bondo right here i had just extra filler so i put it on here on this set on this crack and i filled it and then i took my time and i knocked down the high spots with the da and then i went from there to a paint stick and i sanded it remember i did the 15 degrees cross my pattern and then i hand sanded and rolled it over now i did break my paint stick so anyway so just to show you guys it's nice and flat i even come all the way out and there's no gap on either side doesn't matter how far i go out or what i do this is going to be a nice flat surface and, and another thing I was doing, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I was I was handling this thing. I, I'm moving it around and, and popping it around because this thing does not gently go back in place. To get these tabs back, you know, in the dash underneath the the uh, these tabs right here. Where's it at? Yeah, these tabs right here. In order to get these slid down underneath the windshield, it, it takes some some beating and, and pushing and getting these screw holes back in right here you know so i don't want this thing to be fragile i want it to be something that will endure getting put back in so anyway 
like I said, this this video is getting way too long. It's way longer than than I, I was anticipating it to be. So I'm gonna cut it off here. Guys, if you like anything you see, if you're enjoying the comment content, like I said, I still I don't want my talking problem is today. But anyway, if you guys like the content, you like what you're learning, you have any ideas or want to comment or, or want to share this with your friends, please feel free to share. Please subscribe. Please like. Please hit that not notification bell. And uh, let's just keep putting this stuff out. And, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.